The Bay Area is a tech mecca, and its centerpiece San Francisco has a ton of history, places to explore, and lots of ways of getting around. But despite its sprawling size, it might behoove you to ditch the car while you're visiting. For one, free parking is almost impossible to find, and public garages like this one can cost a lot. We're talking $60 a day, and most hotels charge extra for parking. Fortunately, there are many more active ways of getting around the town, and some of them could save you money. So how should you get around? There are tons of options, and I'm here to tell you about the best. This is your ride guide to San Francisco. First, if you're trying to get from the airport to the city without renting a car, the best bet is to take the BART. The BART stands for Bay Area Rapid Transit. It's the subway system, and a one-way ticket from the airport to Market Street costs $9. That's a lot better than taking an Uber or Lyft, which could cost you 30 or 40 bucks. If you're going straight from BART to the pier, it's worth noting that a BART ticket will get you two free tickets on a Muni. The Muni will take you all the way from the Mission District to Pier 39. And you can get a day pass for only five bucks. Also, it's worth noting the city operates a fleet of electric buses as a part of its transit system. It's probably the best value for transportation. If you're looking for a tour, there are several options available. Double-decker bus tours offer up to 10-hour tours to see the city, and they range in price from $50 to about $150, depending on what package you select. This wasn't my first time in San Francisco, but it was my first time taking an open bus tour. I was so amazed at how much of the city I was able to see on the tour. This is Haight Street, spelled H-A-I-G-H-T. Hey look, it's City Hall. The tour company isn't sponsoring this video, but I did find it to be the best way to explore all of San Francisco in one day. And yeah, mine took three hours. A three hour tour. And I made no stops. Right, you wanna eat here? Yeah. Here? There's nowhere to eat here. So definitely keep that in mind if you're on a deadline because there are other fun ways to explore San Francisco that I didn't even get to experience, like riding on a Segway. Segway tours are an exciting and unique way of exploring Golden Gate Park. Rates start at about $50 per person. There's also these neat little roadsters called go-cars. They offer GPS-guided city tours for as low as $25 per person. Okay, so it would be strange not to mention San Francisco's historic cable cars. For a real cable car experience, two routes are available through the city. The downside to trying to hitch a ride is, well, everyone wants to. So wait times can be as long as two hours. I got up at the crack of dawn on a Sunday to beat the crowds, but I'm telling you, they get crazy. The two routes run from the pier all the way to Union Square, and a one-way trip costs $7 no matter where you're heading. For better or worse, San Francisco is ripe with bike and scooter share companies. Probably better for you because they're one of the most fun ways of getting around. You have several options, including jump and lift for bikes, and skip and scoot for scooters. Jump and bay wheels are easy options because you can rent them through the Uber and Lyft apps respectively. And at $2 for the first 30 minutes, Bay Wheels offers the better value. Scoot also offers Vespa style electric scooters and they come with a helmet. But in order to ride one, you need to watch a tutorial or do an in-person training. Hey look, it's the painted ladies. Scooters are probably a bad idea if you're trying to get to Lombard. Unless of course you can't think of a more fun way of riding down this famous curvy street. All scooter share rentals range in price, but average about 15 to 30 cents a minute in the Bay. Unfortunately, some of your last mile transportation options aren't zoned for San Francisco's most popular destinations, which means parking there could cost you. Scooters are okay at the pier, but bikes are a no-go. No bike and scooter share companies are really allowed anywhere near the Presidio, Golden Gate Bridge, or Golden Gate Park. Wanna check out the water? Free options include visiting the beach, walking across Golden Gate Bridge, or going to the pier. But only one of them gets you a view of the sea lions. If you're planning a trip to the beach, it's worth noting that most people don't come here to actually swim. It's more of like a picnic destination, and not to sound like a curmudgeon, but it is way too windy and way too cold. Pretty good views though. Check out these views behind me. With sites like these, who wouldn't want to take some sort of cruise? And boat tours can be as cheap as $30 a person. When it comes to hitting the water, you have a lot of options for touring the bay. But if you want to visit the nation's most popular national park, you only have one route, and it's through Alcatraz Cruises. 
Alcatraz Island is the most popular national park in the nation, so they say. I'm not sure how they factor those numbers, but we'll roll with it for the sake of the video. Everyone wants to check out Alcatraz, but tickets are extremely hard to come by and must be booked at least a week out. Some dates can even sell out months in advance. Everyone wants to check out Golden Gate Bridge. You can drive across, walk across, or take an open bus tour. I feel like I made the best decision. Oh, San Francisco, chock full of ways of getting around. Some traditional, some cutting edge. Using the city's different forms of mobility really enhances your journey. It helps put you in the shoes of the people who live there, and I highly recommend it.